Some time ago we did a video at John's house here because he had a problem with a heat pump. The heat pump wasn't working, it was freezing up, it was noisy. He contacted me because he just wanted to find the quarry where he could blow the whole thing up and uh, go back to the gas spoiler. But then Adam from Heat Geeks got involved, he saw it and he said, look, I think we can fix this. Well, they didn't fix it, they replaced it. And a year later, I've come back to see John and see what he thinks of it because his wife, Alison, wasn't persuaded. She went, mm, we've had such a disaster. Yeah, it's been a big success, to be honest. It's done everything everything and more than I expected and I think the whole experience and particularly talking to people like Adam the Heat Geeks understanding how it works and experiencing it has been a real uh, eye-opener. I'd say it's a very complex thing to to get to grips with for anyone like myself who's not technical. Every house is different and you've got to have a system tailored for your needs really. That's quite difficult isn't it because you've got a house here that is a mixture of old and new. You've got thermite block yeah. in some places, you've got nine inch solid brick in other places, yep. got a bit of underfloor heating, a few radiators, so it's a real mix of it is. things going on there, wasn't there? Yeah. And, and the old heat pump just didn't do the job, it didn't keep it warm, was it costing a well, lot of money to run? I think there's a number of things about it really, it was installed badly and I had to have all the radiators replaced after the original install, after the company had gone bust, so that was all done after the event and trying to make it work, and it never did work really properly, and part of the problem with hindsight is I was treating it like a, a normal heating system where if you went on holiday you turn it off, if you went out for any length of time you might want to turn it off and that mm. sort of thing. But they don't work like that. It was Adam who persuaded me just leave it run. And so since last February for a whole year it's just been set to 20 degrees and the only time the house has not been at 20 degrees is during the summer and it's really hot outside mm. and of course the house warms up beyond 20 degrees. So then it switches itself off and that's exactly. it. Exactly, so, so you have a long period of the, the heating being off but of course what this heat pump does that the previous one didn't was heat the water as well. So I was talking to a mate of mine yesterday and he said, oh yeah, we have we turn the heating off in certain rooms and they're freezing and that's because we don't use them and all the rest of it. Well, what I'd done almost by way of an experiment really was keep all the doors open on all the rooms, so six bedrooms, three or four of which we do use fairly regularly anyway, and just leave it run and see what happens. So the whole lot for a six bedroom house and, and, and a large area downstairs has cost, I think it was about 920 quid for the heating and the water. So that's that's monitored by its own thing. Yeah. So it's not that's not anything to do with the rest of electricity. Four fifths of my electric bill is the heat pump. So they take a lot of electricity because of the deal that Velon had done with Ovo Energy and Ovo give you a deal where you're spending electricity at 15p kilowatt hour. That works at 920. So I know exactly how much I'm spent. I mean, as I've told you before, Roger, I'm not one of these people who monitors every minute. I was surprised to see you are the top performing heat pump of that type in the country, which is... Yeah. Quite a thing, isn't it? 12 really? kilowatt. The main part of the house is 12 inch solid brick. In my head, and probably most people, they think, well, that's not going to work because the, you, know, you haven't got the insulation there. But the only insulation we had to do, as you well know, is re-insulate the loft. That's the most important thing to do before you get a heat pump or anything. The heating has just been left on and the walls of the house absorb the heat and it just stays constant. They're working like a thermal store, really. They have, yeah, so, which so, again... So Adam, they warm up and then they give heat back. You've got an even heat all around the building. Which is what Adam was trying to persuade us. And of course, yeah. we were very, very, very sceptical, but it's worked incredibly well. And I think that brings me on to another subject, because the original idea when yeah, I had a bit of money in my pocket to spend on this original heat pump was, you know, oh, well, you know, save the planet, less carbon and all the rest of it. But now I'm thinking the main reason for I buy a heat pump is because the heating is better because there was a period um, so I'd had the original heat pump for five years then the noise was so great because the bearings had gone it was howling. Funnily enough we had somebody just the other day who commented on that video and he said it's not the bearings at all this guy's a, a refrigeration engineer he said what's happened there and it's quite astute this guy because yeah. He was going from the short we did on the noise, not the whole video. He hadn't watched the whole video. What's happened there is that it's frozen at some point, and he said it stuffed the compressor. He said that noise you can hear is the compressor, not the bearings. So when Adam came around and said it's the bearings, it's because it's on the wonk. The people are saying, no, it will run even, you know, yeah, those yeah, bearings yeah. would run if it was off level. The fact that it's a compressor was interesting because it 
could have been that somebody could have put a new compressor into that, regas. Well, it. As, as you know, the um, I said on two or three occasions in the middle of February, I was out with a hose yeah. trying to get rid of the ice because the fans were clipping the ice. I could well have damaged the, uh, the thing. If you damage a fan, as soon as it's out of balance, it will yeah. make a horrible yeah. noise. But I think that screeching that I heard, the first time I pulled up at your house and uh, got out of my van and I got, blimey, what's that? And you oh. said it's noisy. And you'd only switched it back on because I was coming so I could see it. Exactly. But before that, because your neighbour had had to move into the... Well, it was embarrassing. I mean, apart from, you know, we could hear it if anyone was in one of the bedrooms on that side of the house, you know, yeah. it, was just, it was just awful. Going back to the point about the gas and it being a better form of heating, we had this awful noise that we've discussed in the past and we had to turn the, the thing off. And of course that happened in the autumn of yeah. two years ago. So we had a period from October to February when the heat geeks come in and replace the thing where we went back to gas. The only difference we had this time around, of course, we had bigger radiators. Problem I then had, I found with the gas, of course, is the temperature varied, particularly in the least insulated part of the house, which was the top corner of the house, where the nine inch brick was on two walls. It'd heat the room up, then it'd go off, and then it'd cool very quickly. So it fluctuated between 16 and 17, say 22, 23. So I've turned in the thermostatic valve down, so it would stop it going up too far but it still go down so then i got a electric heater in to equalize it oh, okay and it, it was just a real faff that was just one room where i'd moved my office to since all this had happened and i thought well this is not a great scenario then of course the e-geeks come in so i had an initial period from february through march april i thought well this seems to be much better and then of course this winter where we've had you know, minus temperatures and down at three degrees a lot. The cold rooms, I call it, 20 degrees the whole time. It's just amazing. In defense of gas boilers, because you yeah. said that, you know, the heat pump is a better <coughs> form of heat than the gas. If you'd run your gas boiler at that low temperature constantly, yeah. you would have got roughly the same kind of result. Yeah. And it could well be that, you know, it, you would have been quite happy with that. You don't know because you didn't do it, you know, Never because tried you were, it. But, no. but you've left your gas boiler and you left your gas boiler because your wife has said, don't remove that. I'm well, not I, I, I mean, I she's been through too to, much pain. I wasn't very keen to remove it either, to be fair, because of the, the first uh, experience where it was wrongly and badly installed and not designed at all. It was a complete disaster, which brings me on to the whole thing about the government and the 7,500 grant. I mean, most politicians would be like me. They don't know anything about engineering or, or, or how heat pumps work. But to just blithely say, oh, we want heat pumps, and that's a great idea, I think is, is really quite dangerous. We need a good system in place where the systems are properly designed and uh, the, the people who install them are accountable for what they do. So that means a bit of regulation, which no one likes. If you're giving seven and a half grand away to make someone happy, they don't want to be in my situation where they turn around and say, well, these things are rubbish, they don't work. I think it would be in everyone's best interest to think this through and get a degree of regulation in there so that people are taught properly and, oh, absolutely. and, and take a pride in what they do. Yeah, I mean, people say I'm anti-heat pump only because I get loads of emails from people who say, we had this heat pump put in, it's an absolute nightmare, it breaks down, it doesn't heat the house. Whatever the reason, there are loads and loads of reasons, but it's a bit of a one-way street because when you've taken that grant and you have a heat pump installed, you're not supposed to then go back to a gas boiler, even if you want to. I think at some point, the government has to ease up on its whole dogmatic approach to it. Admit, as they have in the House of Commons, where they trial some heat pumps there, they're not for everybody, they're not for all buildings. If they work for you, absolutely fine, as they have eventually for you, and they would work for your but, neighbours. But, but if you take it the other way and say, well, seven and a half grand, you're getting that because people like Heat Geeks have said it's going to be fine, then you haven't got a problem. Absolutely. Because pe people won't want to take it out. The thing that Heat Geeks are doing is to say, we will design the system, we will put the heat pump in, and if it doesn't work, if it doesn't produce the COP of whatever it is, we will remove it or, or change because it they or know do what something, doing. which is which is absolutely yeah. the way to yeah. go. The guys are driven. I mean, all, oh, yeah, all yeah, the guys yeah. I've yeah. met, the ones who turned up here on mass were fantastic. Yeah, Alison thought they were one. great. I mean, she, yeah. she, she was converted really almost before the system came in because these guys mm. are so dedicated to what they yeah, do yeah. and they were fun and you know this is what we do and we want to get it right tommy wasn't it trying yeah. to persuade her to take the gas boiler out. tommy tommy hated the gas boiler he's going get that bloody thing out 
of it. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, it offended him that he had to, to leave it incorporate in. it. And, yeah. and now you've got a system where if the heat pump did go wrong, and this is my only thing, okay, it's working beautifully. If it did develop a fault, printed circuit board or whatever, you have this instant thing where you can just turn the valve there, turn that one on, fire up the gas boiler and you're away. Now, yeah. the problem for you is that you've got a stand in charge there and well, that means you've got a stand issue. in charge for gas. The stand in charge thing, the government's trying to sort it out, aren't they? By absorb, saying to companies, you've got to absorb the stand in charge back into the, into, the, into the tariff. One idea they're looking at is that you could have a slightly higher tariff because they're not going to do it for nothing. No, 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 of course uh, not, no. So a slightly higher tariff, do away with the standing charge, so they give you the choice. And for you, that'd be fantastic, because you could say, I'm never going to use this gas anyway. I'll go for the slightly higher tariff. If anything goes wrong, I can just switch it on and, and pay the slightly higher the, tariff. The beauty of that, of course, is that you get to a point then where you say, well, hang on a second, paying for the gas, I'm only actually running a gas cooker. Why don't I get, you know, one of these modern induction knobs, which all the yeah. chefs are now using yeah. all that on TV yeah, yeah, and all the rest of it, yeah. and then do a get away with gas altogether, which is a big ticket in box from an environmental point of view. I yeah. love the gas cooker, you know, yeah. I like cooking and all the rest yeah. of it, but it's a bit of a temptation to say, well, let's do without gas. The London Boiler Company, the majority of replacements they're doing where they're taking out gas boilers putting in electric boilers is because of the landlord certificate because yeah. at the moment the landlord has to have a gas safe engineer yeah. come around and sign it safe do the test costing them say 180 quid for a gas certificate yeah. safety yeah. certificate 180 quid every year they think do you know what let's just take that boiler out mm. if it's due for replacement and put in the electric boiler they're not as efficient as heat pumps. For a lot of people in flats, they yeah, haven't got yeah. the option of the no, heat pump. Right. And that's, a lot of people said when they saw the video where they did the installation, well, that's all right for him. He's got a garage, he's got a plant room, but we haven't got that space. And I think for some people, that's going to be a, an issue forevermore, isn't but that, it? That brings you on to another point, doesn't it, about electric, and that's the cost of electricity. I think we're one of the most expensive yeah, in Europe. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in the world, apparently. If, if the government want to build infrastructure and all the rest of it, use that as a target and say, we will bring down the cost of electricity by X percent by whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. That would make a serious difference not only for domestic users and people in flats and things like yeah. that but yeah. industry as well well it's interesting because we get lots of comments from people living abroad who are saying i can't understand what the problem is here i live in northern finland and uh, we got a heat pump and it's no problem and you know it doesn't cost us that much to run and i say well, okay so what's your electricity price yeah, yeah. in finland what's your electricity price in sweden and norway yeah, you well know, we have got a hydroelectric dam just at the back of the house yes <laughs> it, it, it's a lot cheaper and, yeah, that, and, and yeah. look at yeah. france you know yeah. france has got so many nuclear the power stations that their electricity price although it's not that cheap it's not that high and you can run it direct electricity they've also got a, a um Barrage. Yeah. They've got a barrage in uh, northern France, is it Brittany or somewhere? Yeah. They've had it since the 60s. We've yeah, been talking yeah. Yeah. since the 60s. I remember yeah. reading and writing about it myself back in Wales, the Seven Barrage. The Swansea just, Tidal Lagoon, which yeah. they've never built. We've got this resource. We know what it's going to be doing for the next thousand years because we know where the moon is. If a tide stopped working, we're in trouble, aren't we? Well, you exactly know, something, right. Yeah. Something very bad yeah. Yeah. has gone wrong. But we're an island surrounded by tides know, and I some know. of the biggest I tide know. fluctuations yeah in the world i've got a lot of sympathy for people who say about the environment and you know birds and all the rest of it and the yeah. wildlife but as some of the best engineers in the world we can engineer an environment yeah. if we wanted to so this what i would consider to be the slightly faltering entry into heat pumps to try and convert the, the whole country over to heat pumps do away with the gas boiler I don't think will ever happen. I don't think it'll ever work. I think that we're going to have to have gas, we're going to have to have electricity, and until we get something like nuclear fusion, you know, which will solve all our yeah, problems yeah, immediately. Yeah, but yeah. but I, I think there's got to be a mix, and I think that's my big problem with anybody, even heat geeks, Adam and so on. When I talk to Adam, he's almost deaf to the uh, the objections to heat pumps. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's an, he's yeah. an evangelist. Yeah. Yeah. He's absolutely driven. Yeah. But I don't really trust people like that. If somebody comes around to my house and they are absolutely heat pump, heat pump focused like Tommy and so on, mm. I go, hang on, I want what's best for me and my house, not, you know, you, to suit you. You've got an agenda. Mm. You want to convert the world to heat pumps. They don't suit my particular property. So... Although I love heat kicks, I love what they do, I think sometimes you've got to balance the, the argument up a bit. I've definitely shifted in my attitude towards uh, heat pumps and uh, low energy heating systems. Low temperature heating low systems. Temp yeah, yeah, low temperature yeah. heating systems, ones that are on 
24-7. It's a different form of heating. It works really well here because it was properly designed. The one that I had initially was not properly designed and it didn't work. If the government and the MPs want to push heat pumps, it's not just a question of saying here's a, a big grant. I mean, the seven and a half thousand pound grant is one of the biggest in Europe. So it's, it's not inconsequential and they're trying to kickstart it. But I think they, until you say seven and a half grand, providing you have it installed by people who know what they're talking about. And people who will tell you don't have one as well, because the geese will say, they, I know they said to me, you know, one or two places we've been to where we don't think it's possible. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what you want. Yeah. Just a bit more honesty yeah. about it. And don't do it around the margin either. If it's marginal, we'll stick with what you got and what you know. Yeah. There's a clear win here. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And I'm very happy with the whole thing, I have to say. Your original heat pump, I mean, this, this guy uh, that contacted me, the refrigeration engineer, he said that if your system had been designed properly, if the flow rates had been enough, then it would never have frozen up. Because what it would do is it would take back a bit of heat from the house, defrost it and you yeah. would never ever know and he said it was wholly the fault of the design of the system i think they put the buffer in afterwards didn't they? oh yeah they, that was they... one of the things we put in to try and make it work along with the yeah. radiators yeah. along with the rewiring along with the new tails into the house to carry the additional electricity load there's so many things that we tried to do to get it to work mm. i think he's right actually because mm. that uh, it was an lg heat pump lg are a big company i mean mm. they're not going to putting rubbish stuff around yeah, there yeah i think if it had been put in properly and designed properly then we would have had a fighting chance they did over engineer it as well saying this thing will you know really boost out a lot of energy so you won't have any problems i think he's right what he geeks did is they came in and they took out everything that would restrict the thing and, and what they're saying to you is to keep as much stuff open allow as much flow through yeah. the system and that's what that's why i left keep everything on and left the yeah. all the thermostatic valves full on just open everything it all on yeah so the, the the house whichever room you go in is 20 degrees it's okay let's just have your final words here your advice to anybody thinking about getting a heat pump get people in who know exactly what they're doing and and they can prove that that's very difficult i think getting tradesmen in certainly heat geeks are up there with the best and i've come across one or two heating engineers who know heat geeks they haven't joined that network but they're obviously committed as well but you've got to get people in to know what they're doing all right so so not not gas installers who have decided to do a bit of heat pump the people have done dedicated heat pump i think so yeah so so i think the thing is that what Heatgeek is saying is that we will guarantee the system. We will guarantee you get this COP, the coefficient of performance, yeah. out of it. And if you don't, then it's up to us to come and fix well, it. Well, then, or... if if Heatgeeks can do that, why doesn't the government turn around and say, well, if you want seven and a half grand, you've got to go with the company who will offer you that sort of guarantee, and then the company's got to prove it can live by the guarantee. We had one or two tweaks to the system after the event, after the original installation, to improve the Wi-Fi signal. So we could monitor okay, it yeah, better. Yeah. So nothing fundamental. Tom Plum, the heat geek, come in and just did it, gets on with it, and you know, it's just brilliant service. Well, thanks very much anyway. So I probably won't come back in another year to see if you're still warm. <laughs> but if you're not, you know, if anything happens, yes, let, let, if let the heat pump breaks down, well, I'll let you yeah, know, yeah, I mean, that would know. be even, you know, okay, we say that's nothing to do with the installation, that's the heat pump itself. Yeah, it's a very good valent heat pump you've got yes, there isn't it yes, one of the yeah, top yeah. you know makes and so on and it's all on line and everything yeah and so it should be good um but if it's not and you it does you know it's for, for the sake of the story and for people following yeah, this yeah it would it would be great to have that because you've been you know very forthright and honest about the whole thing anyway now yeah. so well it's I an education isn't it i've been educated people need to be educated about it and and it's a worthy thing to do i think good. okay great to well, see thank you, you again, anyway thanks a lot yeah, yeah cheers <laughs>